Fontaine International is vitally concerned about the safety of our customers and the performance of our products. That's why we are continually improving the Fontaine TechLock system, which includes the 5092, 6000, 7000, and our new 3000 series fifth wheels and mounting brackets. When you experience the patented safety features and performance advantages of our TechLock system, you will understand how we earn our reputation as the premier supplier of fifth wheels worldwide. In these next few minutes, we will show you the proper coupling, sliding, and uncoupling procedures for the Fontaine 3000 series fifth wheels. But before we begin, let's take a look inside the 3000 series locking system and see what happens when the trailer kingpin engages the lock. The Fontaine 3000 series lock features a patented sensor that will not allow the fifth wheel to close if the kingpin enters at the wrong height. Here's how it works. If the kingpin enters the lock at the correct height, the bottom flange of the kingpin contacts the height sensor and starts to turn the jaw. As the jaw rotates, the lock bar begins to move into place. The lock bar can only slide in behind the jaw when the jaw rotation is complete. When the lock bar is completely closed and the pull handle is all the way in, the notch on the rear of the handle engages on the handle slot. This assures that the fifth wheel is in the full lock position and ready for the handle clip to be inserted. Now let's see the proper coupling, sliding, and uncoupling procedures for Fontaine 3000 series fifth wheels. Begin with a visual inspection to check for damaged or missing parts. The fifth wheel must be securely fastened to the tractor. Pay close attention to welds and areas around bolt holes. Make sure there are no cracks or missing bolts. The top plate surface should be covered with a liberal coating of grease. Improper lubrication could cause steering problems. If you are using a sliding fifth wheel, be sure the slide locks are fully engaged. Make sure the fifth wheel is in the proper position, tilted down in the rear and resting on the stops. Make sure the area around the vehicle is level, clear of obstacles, and that the trailer wheels are chocked and the spring brakes are engaged. If the trailer is loaded, the cargo must be secured. Move the pull handle slightly forward. Now pull the handle all of the way out. When the handle is extended and the tips of the jaw and lock bar are visible in the throat of the fifth wheel, the lock is in the open position. Now inspect the trailer kingpin and kingpin plate for damage and proper lubrication. Make sure the trailer kingpin is not bent or broken. Now it is time to position the tractor in front of the trailer. Never back under the trailer at an angle because you might push the trailer sideways and break the landing gear. Using the outside mirrors, check your position by looking down both sides of the trailer. Back slowly and stop just before making contact with the trailer. Do not hit the trailer. If you back up too fast, you could cause substantial damage to the trailer and the tractor. Secure the tractor by engaging the parking brake and placing the transmission in neutral. One of the most common mistakes drivers make is attempting to couple with the wrong trailer kingpin height. Proper kingpin to fifth wheel alignment is crucial to avoid damage to the trailer, kingpin, kingpin plate, fifth wheel, and the entire tractor frame, not to mention the driver. If the trailer is too high, the kingpin will not strike the rotating locking jaw and could miss the fifth wheel altogether. If the trailer is too low, you could easily damage the fifth wheel and the trailer. If your tractor is equipped with an air ride suspension, make sure the system is inflated before making trailer height adjustments. Never inflate the tractor air ride suspension when the trailer kingpin is above the throat of the fifth wheel. This is a sure way to damage the fifth wheel and the kingpin. To establish proper coupling height, raise or lower the trailer by adjusting the landing legs. When the tractor and trailer are properly aligned, the leading edge of the trailer strikes the upper portion of the approach ramps. Use the lowest reverse gear and slowly back the tractor. The trailer will lift slightly and you will hear a distinctive sound as the kingpin engages the fifth wheel. Avoid hitting the kingpin too hard. Now connect the air and electrical lines to the trailer. Raise the trailer landing gear slightly off the ground and perform the tug test. While the tractor brakes are still locked, put the tractor in low and ease out on the clutch just enough to feel the resistance of the load. If the coupling feels secure, place the transmission in neutral, engage the parking brake, and shut off the engine. 
Now perform a visual inspection. First, check to make sure the pull handle is fully retracted behind the skirt notch. Now secure the handle by inserting the handle clip. Use a flashlight if necessary and go under the trailer and look into the back of the throat of the fifth wheel. The locking mechanism should be engaged, securing the kingpin around the two inch shank. There should be no space between the fifth wheel and the kingpin plate on the trailer. If there is a space, the kingpin may be on top of the closed fifth wheel jaw and the trailer would come loose very easily. Now that the trailer coupling is complete, you may need to relocate your fifth wheel for better weight distribution. Make the necessary adjustments by following the Fontaine fifth wheel sliding procedure. Start by locking the trailer brakes. Set the cab control valve in the unlocked position. Visually check to make sure that both locking wedges are released. Pressure on the locking wedges can be relieved by lowering the landing legs. This also allows the fifth wheel to slide with greater ease. Now move the tractor forward or backwards slowly to position the fifth wheel. Once the proper position is acquired, set the cab control valve lever in the off and locked position. Finally, make a visual check to see that both locking wedges are fully engaged in the slide rail castings. Now fully raise the landing legs and secure the crank handle. Under no condition should you operate the vehicle unless the locking wedges are fully engaged and the landing legs are fully retracted, as this can damage the tractor, the trailer, and the landing legs. Finally, check to make sure there is proper clearance between the top of the tractor tires and the bottom of the trailer before driving the vehicle. This successfully completes the proper coupling and sliding procedures. Your vehicle is now ready for the road. Now let's turn our attention to the proper uncoupling procedure. First, make sure your tractor is aligned with the trailer on a flat, level surface that can support the trailer and its contents. This is important because pulling out at an angle can damage the landing gear. Lock the trailer brakes and back slowly to ease pressure on the fifth wheel locking jaw. Now engage the parking brake while the tractor is pushing against the kingpin. If your tractor is equipped with an air ride suspension, do not deflate prior to uncoupling. Doing so will make the fifth wheel very difficult to uncouple and could actually damage the fifth wheel and kingpin. Next, chalk the trailer wheels and lower the landing legs. If you have poor ground condition, it may be necessary to provide a base for the landing legs. If you have an air ride suspension, lower the landing legs until they touch the ground, then add one additional turn. If you have a spring suspension, give a few extra turns in low gear. Do not raise the trailer off the fifth wheel. Disconnect the electrical and air lines and secure them to the tractor. Next, remove the handle clip and move the pull handle slightly forward. Now pull the handle all of the way out and slightly forward again until the notch on the handle engages the handle block located on the skirt of the fifth wheel. Now ease the tractor forward until the fifth wheel comes out from under the trailer. Let the trailer slowly slide down the fifth wheel approach ramps. If your vehicle is equipped with an air ride suspension, this will allow the necessary time for it to adjust to the unloaded height. Stop with the tractor frame still under the trailer. This prevents the trailer from falling if the landing gear fails or sinks into the ground. Now engage the parking brake and place the transmission in neutral. Inspect to make sure the ground is properly supporting the trailer landing gear. Release the parking brake and slowly pull out from under the trailer. Remember, by following the proper coupling, sliding, and uncoupling procedures, you can count on Fontaine fifth wheels to give you safe, dependable performance mile after mile.